Let's see the course on operating system. First of all, we shall uh, look into module one, which covers introduction to operating systems, along with uh, the other concepts related to the different evolution of operating systems and its operation, the mode of operation. This is Archana Priyadeshni, assistant professor in the Department of Information Science, Kendra Engineering College. So next, let's look into the course objectives and outcomes. The first objective is to introduce certain concepts related to this course and to discuss about the terminology that are being used in this course. Next is to explain the threading concepts and uh, uh, some benefits that are related to multi-threaded systems along with the uh, description of process synchronization the work, uh, the, uh, the process workflow along with the deadlock characteristics and the use of deadlock uh, methodology in this course. And the fourth objective is uh, to introduce some concepts related to memory management and virtual memory management, file systems as well as storage techniques. So once the students have learned this course, uh, they will be able to uh, identify the need of operating systems and to visualize uh, its uh, methods and uh, different types of operating systems. That is differentiate among different types of operating systems. And uh, they will be able to understand uh, the techniques which, which are relevant uh, to apply for using different uh, resources how different resources are managed third outcome is there will be a familiar with the file system commands memory and uh, processor workflow along with storage techniques that are used in this operating system and last we have uh, we have the students being uh, uh, gaining the knowledge over different concepts in operating system that is uh, they'll uh, understand some case studies and uh, uh, how this uh, operating system is being used in different platforms with the help of case studies so before moving on to this uh, course concepts let's look into the basic um, uh, details that are relevant for this course first of all the subject code or the course code is 18 CS43 that is from the uh, 2018 19 uh, scheme and uh, the internal marks is evaluated over to 40 and external marks is 60 and number of contact hours for this particular course is 40 and the exam duration is 3 hours so let's look at the highlights first of all uh, we'll be looking into the operating system the definition of operating system along with the some abstract view of uh, how does the operating system look like and beyond this uh, we, uh, I will be discussing about the views of operating system user view and system view plus what are the goals of this operating system next task is to understand the computer system organization how where is exactly the OS located in the computer system and next let's look into the architecture computer system architecture along with that uh, we'll see the operating system structure so in this uh, uh, computer system structure we will be uh, uh, studying what exactly is the you know how does the computer system work and uh, the concept of interrupt and all so 
so uh, next is uh, we are going to study about process management in a short uh, uh, terminology in a short way and detailed discussion about this process management will be in the uh, next video the third uh, the next terminology is memory management some short concept about memory management and the storage management protection and security about different computing environments that are followed and finally i'll be discussing about open source operating system so here let's discuss what is an operating system so we know that operating system is a short program that manages the computer hardware uh, like uh, your uh, keyboards monitors printers and how these hardware they interact with the application program and where the users are in between these application programs and the hardware so who does this kind of uh, management that is if the user starts uh, processing data or if the user starts asking or query querying some information if he queries some information this kind of information flow is being uh, uh, sent back to and fro from the hardware on to the application program via the users. So who does this kind of management? Uh, where is the resource allocate or who does this resource management? If the user wants to allocate some particular program in the memory, so which part of the memory is being used and when it will, when it will be free, and so on all these kind of management is done by the software that is operating system so the hardware you know it consists of uh, memory cpu alu io devices peripheral device so on and a system program it basically consists of compilers loaders editors so basically you have uh, and uh, when you just look into some of in into the conceptual view of a computer system so at the top base you have got the computer hardware right next just above the hardware we know that there exists an operating system so this is an operating system which does the kind of management and from the hardware the signals are sent to the operating system and this operating system uh, task is to connect to either the editor or loader or compiler or application programs and finally send the result back to the user so now you can basically visualize where is the operating system. So every computer must have an operating system. So who will control and coordinate the use of hardware among various system as well as application programs. So we have got a differentiation between system programs and application programs. So your application programs may be a Word, MS Word or uh, any other editors that you may be using or any games that you're playing right and system programs are basically related to the uh, uh, kind of uh, um, uh, programming that you do maybe you're doing a program in uh, C and you have got a specific compiler who does this kind of conversion so that comes under this compiler comes under system program editor comes under system program the loader comes under system program all your application related uh, task that is you may be writing some ms word writing some data in the ms word so this ms word it comes under application next if you go to games okay it, it is basically for the user so that is why you say they are application program right and uh, when we talk if you want to talk uh, about operating system it's uh, i can say it's a set of special programs that they run on the computer system right and they perform some basic tasks like uh, maybe recognizing input from the keyboard keeping track of files and directories on the disk and then sending the output to the display screen so we have the basic goals of operating system that is it should be convenient and it should be efficient right so by by the term convenient it means that it must be uh, uh easy to use easy to use and uh, uh, it must be efficient okay efficient means 
uh, it efficient in terms of space as well as time as you know it must work fast it must give the result fast and within uh, you know, by uh, occupying a uh, very much space a reasonable amount of space so these are the basic goals of operating system yeah it should be convenient and efficient so here you can visualize uh, the evolution of windows operating system over the chart that around uh, in the year 1985 and spanning up to the different versions of uh, windows was developed and now currently windows 10 is being used in the uh, desktop systems moreover you can see the uh, reason why they are using uh, windows more uh, more important and in, in the sense uh, they are using more uh, in the into the much uh, severe extent when compared to other operating systems so here you can see different kinds of operating system linux ubuntu android mac os unix windows and apple so these are different flavors of operating system to come back to the same some major uh, increase in the uh, operating system was developed increase in the flavor of operating system mint operating system sun debian centos Fedora Red Hat, as in when the year uh, progressed, you can see different uh, versions of uh, operating system as well as different operating systems were developed. So, this is again uh, you can just uh, understand the uh, fastest operating system that uh, is being used since in 2021. So, most of the users are using Windows operating system or Linux operating system and much fastest in terms of processing speed is uh, uh, co comes under windows linux red hat mac os and uh, solaris FreeBSD. so you can see just the market share how uh, how it has been increased in uh, different countries in india you can observe that only few person that is can just say approximately two percent to three percent are being using uh, iOS operating system, and majority of them are being using Android operating system, mostly in the uh, mobile operating system. Next, the majority of when just compare this uh, with Japan, you can observe majority of them are using iOS operating system when compared to Android. The next is uh, about uh, Win Microsoft Windows is still synonymous with the computer. You can observe in the desktop systems, most of the top operating systems are, are Windows. Okay, you can see this data is there since uh, as of February 2020. You can observe majority of the market share they are using Windows operating system. And few of them are being into use of Mac Macintos, and uh, very less portion of them are being using iOS, Android, or Linux operating system. You can say about seventy-two percent are using Windows, and sixteen percent of the market share has been using Macintos. Again, this is the market share uh, in when compared to March. 2020 you can observe 52 percent of them are using windows 10 uh, and uh, only 30 percent are using windows 7 and the less uh, less portions uh, approximately 10 percent of them each of them are using linux or macintosh or mac os and so on This is the share uh, in the sense the desktop windows version so when compared to the different flavors of windows windows 10 is being used 77 percent and when uh, when you compare windows 7 with windows 8 windows 7 is being used majoritively 16 percent and windows 8 has been it uh, caused a failure in its uh, advancement and next you can observe uh, win vista is the least one which is being used 0.25 percent 
so why exactly windows 10 is uh, increased when compared the users are being using most of them are using windows 10 when compared to windows 7 why is you can see just the kind of uh, performance ratio will be increased in windows 10 that's the first option next is about the start button there's some kind of flexibility in this uh, start button so you can also in windows 7 as you've got the start button here in windows 10 there's nothing like that you can just see the snapshot here and the next option of uh, why windows 10 is being used because of simple task manager you can observe that every details and processes is being listed here in this task manager very simple task manager when compared to Windows 7 and third is the support of security you are uh, not asking uh, the Windows system to update uh, as and when you want so, it, so you can observe that it uh, checks automatically and it goes for Windows update automatically so that's kind of security and support which is being provided in Windows 10. And these are some of tools that are uh, uh, there in Windows 10 that is uh, uh, not in Windows 10, it's in uh, Kali Linux. You can observe different information gathering tools and password attacks tools, wireless attacks tools and maintaining access so you can use different versions of OS for different uh, purposes so you can use Kali Linux for all these kind of uh, hacking kind of facilities or exploring or kind of sniffing or spoofing or identifying uh, the attacks so Kali Linux is the best operating system so here as we have discussed in Kali Linux the first uh, gathering information gathering tool is network map and we have also got port scanning in port 2 IP, Red Hawk, Acorn Dog, and Secret Finder and Breacher. Start with the evolution of operating system. The first stage is uh, in serial processing. Bit by bit processing of data happened in the earlier stage of operating system. And next is a uh, different kind of operating system um, which is called as a batch system was developed in the next era and the third era the concept of multi-programming batch systems came into place wherein different uh, many programs were put into the uh, system and it would process um, uh, parallelly and the final era is about time sharing system which wherein uh, interleaving of the uh, programs was done and, and a particular time slot was allotted to a program and uh, that is called as a time sharing system so uh, we have got uh, why does why is this evolution important is to basically fix the bugs that were used that were there in the previous system and if there were new services uh, we have to uh, there has to be upgradation of the system and in terms of fixing of those bugs or hardware issues or there should be hardware upgrade that's the reason why the systems are being evolved over these years so the first evolution was in serial processing the second era of operating system uh, stage is simple batch system and the third system that was developed as a part of operating system is multi-program batch system and finally the time sharing system so here let's see the evolution of operating system basically the first generation of the operating system made use of vacuum tubes so uh, here, in this first generation of computers, so the vacuum tubes were the basic components of memory and circuitry for CPU. So these tubes were like electric bulbs and they produced lot of heat and insulation they it used to fuse frequently. So therefore, uh, they were very expensive and uh, so in this generation, mainly a batch uh, processing uh, pro processing operating system was used that is 
they used to have uh, programs being written in uh, terms of punch cards you can observe the diagram there in the first figure the punch cards were used uh, wherein uh, the pro uh, uh, the programs uh, were actually read in this punch cards in terms of digital form where one leads to high or zero leads to zero uh, zero le means low and these punch cards were given to the card reader which used to read and process the data so the computers in this first generation made use of machine code as a programming languages so to say about the features of this first generation so this first generation was an era between 1946 to 1959 so uh, this first generation made use of vacuum tubes basically and these were nothing but punch cards and the data used to process uh, very slow and the main features that uh, say about this first generation is about vacuum tube technology and it was unreliable it was very costly and generates a lot of heat and very slow processing that is slow input and output devices were used and uh, it was non portable and it consumes lot of electricity that was a main drawback and the computers we can list about the computers in this first generation that is from 1946 to 1959 the first generation so the computers of this generation were eniac edvac and uni vac ibm computers ibm 701 and so on so the these kind of generation were very huge it occupied an entire uh, lab or uh, place it was very huge uh, uh, such kind of uh, uh, vacuum tube generators was uh, occupying uh, many uh, big place and it used to generate lot of electricity and lot of heat it consumes lot of electricity such kind of vacuum tubes so to accompany uh, to uh, compensate uh, this kind of uh, uh, technology in the second generation what do we have in the second generation we have got transistor based system so the second generation we have got transistor based system which here in the second generation the era was from 1959 to 1965 1959 to 1965 this generation was called second generation computers so what uh, what uh, what do they use in this generation so basically the main components were transistors and you know it is very cheaper and it consumes less power uh, when compared to your uh, uh, first generation computer where it used lots of heat so this transistor made use of less power and was more compact in size very small in size whereas when you compare the previous generation they occupied the entire place very large <clears throat> and here transistor these are more reliable and faster than the first generation machines so as you know in vacuum tubes uh, uh, in where in the first generation it was used it was uh, very slow and because of slow input and output devices were being used in the first generation but here in the second generation transistors they made use of uh, very reliable components and they were faster than compared to the first generation so here the magnetic cores uh, were used as uh, primary memory and magnetic tape and magnetic disk they were used as secondary storage devices so we had used magnetic cores as the primary memory and magnetic tape and magnetic disk they were used as secondary storage devices because of this it was quite faster to process the data so uh, when uh, when talking about the languages that were being used as in the first generation we had used uh, they had used machine language but here in the second generation assembly language and high level languages like fortran and cobol were used so so in the second generation basically uh, the computers used batch processing and multi programming operating system whereas in the first generation they made use of batch operating system but here in the second generation they use both batch processing and multi programming operating system so we'll talk about what is batch processing and uh, multi programming operating system so in batch operating system so the jobs the, uh, the programs were written in terms of jobs and they used to keep all the jobs uh, similar kind of jobs together 
okay and the operator see when the user has written the program he lives out in this batch operating system but the main task uh, here in this batch operating system lies in the operator so the operator fetches all the jobs from the user in the sense fetches all the similar jobs from the user and gives it to the computer for processing so it takes a very long time and uh, any other jobs cannot be processed until and unless the previous job has completed so that is what is called as a batch so as and when one batch finishes only then can the other batch of jobs be processed so it was quite slow and moreover uh, uh, the we can say that the cpu time in batch process system is very uh, we can say it's very less that means the cpu will be idle most of the time because it takes time for the operator to put all these jobs into the operating system next what we can say about the second generation uh, features are so when compared to the first generation they had used vacuum tubes but here in second generation they made use of transistors and these transistors they are reliable when compared to first generation and it is more of a smaller in size as compared to first generation it generates less heat and consumes less electricity as compared to first generation but it is quite faster than first generation this is what we can see and the first generation we had we made use of uh, they made use of what machine level languages only but here uh, this uh, made use of assembly level languages and high level programming languages so some of the computers that we can list in this generation were IBM 1620, CDC 1604, and so on. So next, uh, the next era or the next generation is the third generation. So this period of third generation, it uh, it was from 1965 to 1971, where integrated circuit based, or it was purely integrated circuit based. Okay, so we can just uh, say in brief about this kind of generation computers. So this era was from 1965 to 1971. So the computers in this generation they use integrated circuits in place of transistors. As you know, integrated circuits or ICs, it has got many transistors and many resistors and many capacitors along with the circuitry, right? And the ic was uh, in the sense if you use this integrated circuit uh, we can perform remote processing time sharing multi programming uh, multi programming operating system may be used so in this generation basically the high level languages like fortran cobol pascal algol were used and talking about the features the main features were integrated circuits and these are quite small smaller in size generates less heat and consumes obviously less electricity but it is costly and is faster and more reliable compared to the previous two generations and the it uh, supports high level languages to say some of the computers that were uh, produced in this generation were IBM 360 series the most common series IBM 360 series and Honeywell is a 6000 series or PDP what we call it as a personal data processor coming to the next generation we have got the fourth generation which was from 1971 to 1980s so so far we've seen the previous generation of computers this, so this is the fourth generation this in this fourth generation the very large scale very large scale integrated circuits were used so in this fourth generation very large scale integrated circuits were used and we can observe that these systems are quite smaller when compared to the previous generation and you know very large scale circuits they have got 5000 transistors and other circuit elements with uh, which, are, which are built on a single chip right so this fourth generation computers they are more powerful the compact reliable and affordable 
and talking about the features once again very very large scale integrated technology will be used is used and is very cheap portable reliable very small in size and here the concept of internet was used that was quite different from the previous generations the uh, the technology of pipelining processing was used in the concept of internet was used in this generation and we can list some of the computers that were used in this generation like dc dec 10 pdp 11 cray 1 which is nothing but cray 1 is the supercomputer right the uh, supercomputer was introduced in this fourth generation computers so coming to the uh, before talking about the last generation yeah before telling about these uh, <coughs> Uh, coming generations. Let me talk about the fifth generation computers. So this uh, fifth generation computers was from 1980 till date. 1980 till date. So far we are using the fifth generation, and uh, uh, in the fifth generation, VLSI technology became the ultra large scale integration technology. 5G and now moreover we have got also got 6G and so on. So in this fifth generation uh, it is based on AI and uh, parallel processing and AI is an emerging branch in computer science as you know all have high level languages will be used in this fifth generation and one more advancement is also sixth generation computers. So in the fifth generation what, what types of computers were developed is desktop, laptop, notebook, ultrabook, chromebook so from the fifth generation and so on came the advancement. So this is just a gist of the uh, dates which I have highlighted over in the slide. Now, starting from 1961, there is the dawn of the mini computers up till 1969, uh, wherein you can observe uh, Multix was uh, introduced in 1964 and Unix system was introduced in 1969. And next, you can observe that the Windows or Linux system was developed in 1991. And Windows, the first Windows or the Windows NT came out at uh, around 1993. And the Android OS was developed in 2008. 